Okay, so unit circle today. Um, Halloween 1031. So from the Common Core, what we're talking about is understanding radian measure, and the radians are the, the pi version of angles, okay? Radian measures of an angle as an arc length on the unit circle, okay? So first of all, graph the circle, x squared plus y squared equals 1. You know, it's right here. So what we know is that this is the point 1, 0. This is the point 0, 1. The coordinate of this point is negative 1, 0. And the coordinate of this point is going to be at um, 0, negative 1 in the back, OK? Now, what we also know, though, is if it really is an angle measure as an arc length, then I know this. I know that. The arc length here, if the radius is 1, the arc length here, the length. If you were to actually take a piece of string, drape it across this, and then measure it, the length of it will be pi halves, or about 1.7 inches, feet, whatever. Okay, It really is the arc length. But we're going to call that an angle also. So not only is it an arc length, but it's also going to be an <coughs> angle in terms of radians. We know at this point that this is going to be pi. Okay, So... 3.14, if you take a piece of string and drape it across, right? This would be about 3.14 inches. 3 pi halves. Okay, again, the length would be about 3, point, 3 pi halves, or the arc length, or the angle. Now, we got a new thing called an angle in radians, and back to 2 pi, okay? All right, so then we've got those in there. Now, find the arc values of 1, 2, 3. Now, one radian, I want you to remember this, okay? One radian is approximately 57 degrees, right? One radian as an angle is about 57 degrees. So if we were to put our radians in here, and I'm going to use a different color for that one. Oh, let's see what I got. Hmm? Approximately equal to, yeah, yeah. So 1 is about here. Here's about 1. So that means the length from here to here is about 1. Okay. 2 would be over here somewhere because it would be about 114 degrees. Now, I know that's 3.14, right? Uh, okay, here's a big key. This is 3.14. So that means the number 3 would be just above it, right? The value of 3. If 3 is here, and that's 3.14, right? Wouldn't it be just below it? No, 3 and then 3.14, right? Oh, yeah. Right? And then um, I do know that uh, 4, well, 57 times 4, let's see, where's my calculator? Of course, I don't have a calculator. 228. Okay. If I go 57 times 4, 228. So it's about here. Okay. I know that there's the number 4. And then 57 times 5 is about 285. So the number 5 is about here. And then, of course, we know 2 pi, 2 pi, which is about a 6.28, right? So that means 6 has got to be just under it, okay? Those are the numbers, okay? So what we have to get is this new idea that these are angles. These are angles, all right? Um, we're so used to doing angles in terms of degrees, but we're going to do it in terms of radians. And we will learn throughout this course why we want to do it in radians. Tons of applications, all right? All right, so... We've got all those. So example two, let's show that the point square root of 3 over 3 and square root of 6 over 3, somewhere in here, somewhere in here, is actually on the circle. To prove it, let's just use its equation. So we know the equation of the unit circle comes from x squared plus y squared equals 1. What we want to do is just show or prove that this point is on the circumference of the circle. So we just plug it in. We've got an x value and a y value. So I will go and go the square root of 3 over 3 squared plus the square root of 6 over 3 squared, and it should equal 1. Well, if I can do fractions, a little luck, I can do fractions, we'll get to equal 1, okay? So square root of 3 squared is 3. 3 squared is 9. Plus square root of 6 squared is 6 over 3 squared, which is 9. Yeah, because I can add fractions and I get 9 ninths, and that does equal 1. So yes, this point is on the circle, okay? Example 3. 
We just drew the inner circle, and that's all of this, what we just did. This is my unit circle, right? In terms of degrees. But even more importantly for us, because we won't use degrees in here. We will not in terms of radians. This angle here, hear me out, this angle is now called pi 6 radians. This angle here is now called pi fourths. We will not use degrees. Degrees are for dummies. Okay, pi thirds, that's an angle. Okay, all of these radian measures in terms of pi are going to be angles, all right? Same with that, number one is an angle. Same with that, number two is an angle, but in terms of radians, okay? So, we did number three. So turn the page, okay? Now, example four. Aha! This is going to get easy because we have our circle. So, find the terminal point for each angle, pi fours. Well, there's pi fours. There's my, there's my point, right? So the terminal point is just square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2, it's a point. So it's just going to be, because we're looking for a point, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. That's the terminal point for pi force. It's super easy, isn't it? 7 pi 6, well, where's my circle? 7 pi 6 is right there. What's my terminal point? Negative square root of 3 over 2 and negative 1 half. So the terminal point is just going to be a negative... Square root of 3 over 2 and a negative 1 half, okay? 14 thirds. Now, the bummer is 14 thirds is not on the unit circle, is it? No. But what I do know is 3 goes into 14 how many times? Dual division. 3 goes into 14. You guys agree 4 and 2 thirds? So it's really 4 and 2 thirds pi, okay? All right, let's take a journey. Let's take a journey. So I'm looking for four and two thirds, right? So I'm gonna go one pi, two pi, three pi, four pi, and then I need two thirds. Where's that? Right there. Let me do it again. Four and two thirds, okay? There's one pi, two pi, three pi, four pi, but I need four and two thirds, one third, Two thirds. It's right there, and the terminal point is the negative one half, and the square root of three over two. Everybody see how I did that? Yeah. Okay. So it's just going to be my terminal point is going to be my. It's at a, it's at two pi thirds. So it's going to be my terminal point is going to be my negative one half, and square root of three over two. Okay. Negative pi thirds. Okay. Negative pi thirds. Okay. Negative pi thirds. Let's see if. It has to do with the rotation. If pi thirds is this much, and now I'll talk about dumb degrees, 60 degrees, what do you think about negative 60 degrees? How would just rotate backwards? Does that make sense? It's a rotation, which puts me right here at 300 degrees or 5 pi thirds. So instead of rotating this much, pause if I just rotate the exact same rotation, but down or backwards, okay? Which puts me right here at this 5 pi thirds, okay? Which is a 1 half. Negative square root of 3 over 2, okay? Now the reference number or the reference angle, okay? For the following, okay? Now if you do the reference angle, what happens is we created triangles throughout the whole thing, right? We created triangles, right? And then we flip triangles around, around, around. So before we do a whole lot, just think about 7 pi 6, okay? When I look at 7 pi 6, right, that's not a triangle. That, all the way around here, that's not a triangle. But I would have created a triangle right in here, correct? Yeah. So then the triangle must always be flush to the x-axis. So your reference angle, reference number, is always bound by the x-axis. So you'll look at it and say, okay, well, if I look at 7 pi 6, and there's a couple of ways to draw it. Right here, I could draw a triangle right there, but then that's with the y-axis. Don't do that, okay? You want to always make sure your reference angle. So the triangle I'm looking at is this triangle here at 7 pi 6, right? So the tri the angle, the triangle I'm looking for 7 pi 6 looks like this, right? That is a 30, 60, 90, right? But it's just sitting right there, right? See it? Well, that means that this angle 
is 30 degrees, right? But we don't use degrees. Degrees are for dummies. 30 degrees, what's the equivalent? 30 degrees is, what's the equivalent? What's the equivalent? Pi 6. Pi 6. So that means your reference angle, your reference number, is pi 6, okay? Negative pi thirds. Negative 5, 4 pi thirds. Sorry, negative 4 pi thirds. So how do you do this one? Okay, it's a rotation. If positive 4 pi thirds is all the way around to here, okay? Right? Then I just go the same amount, same rotation, but backwards. So I'm going to go from here all the way to here at 120 degrees. I'll do it again. Watch the rotation. Here's 4 pi thirds, right? You see it? But to go backwards, the same rotation, right? So instead of going, we'll do dumb degrees, rotating 240 degrees this way, let's back up. Let's back our tire up 240 degrees, which would put us right there at 120, okay? So what triangle have I created here? What triangle have I created? Yeah, you guys see the 36 to 90, but it's going to be more like this. And here's my angle right there. So that's really a 60 degree angle, right? You guys agree with that? Except we don't use theta to 6 degrees. We don't use dumb degrees. What would that be? What's the equivalent? What's the equivalent? Pi over 3. So we want pi thirds is the radiant equivalent, okay? All right, last one, 4. Well, 4 is not going to be found on the inner circle at all. But if I go back to our reading, let's see where 4 is, okay? So if I go back to the other side of my notes, 4 is right about here, right? So 4 is right about here. But I want this angle, I want this triangle right in there. In fact, let me draw it. Okay. So I know that it's just past pi, isn't it? It's yeah. past pi, and here's 4. So if I want the arc length in between, would it just be 4 minus pi? So think about this. All the way here is 4, all the way here is pi. If we want the difference between the two, we just go 4 minus pi. So the reference angle is just, in this case, 4 minus pi. And we could get a decimal equivalent of it, but 4 minus pi is, is just fine, okay? All right. So that's it.